Hello Year 11, it's Miss Bailey here. Please have your worksheet ready to be filling in as we work through this video. So your first activity is thinking about what you learned last lesson about how to carry out chromatography. Can you identify what the errors are in each of these experiments? So pause the video and have a go at these. Okay, so with A, so looking at BA, we can see that our water level is up here, whereas our substances were put on a line down here. So what's happened here is our substance has dissolved into the water, and so the water hasn't carried it up the paper because our substance has ended up being dissolved into the water that's in the beaker. So the error here is that our solvent level was too high so we should always make sure that our water level is below where we put our substances on the line so it's important that we measure that out and it's important that our starting line is sufficiently high so that the water can um, touch the paper so that it can travel up the page um, B is actually error free, so this is what it should look like if it's done correctly. And you can see the different colours which have come out. So B, we can clearly see some pink and a yellow. Whereas in this one, we can see some orange and then another colour here. Whereas this one, we've got lots of colours going on. So we've got the blue green, a red, a bluey purple and a purple there. So this one has lots of different components making it up. And then in C, so we can see that we have the distinct lines for where our substance, where our substances have traveled up the paper, but we also have this consistent um, other substance which is also traveling up the paper and this is because they've used pen so pen is soluble in water and so the mixture of inks that are in our pen they get dissolved and travel up the paper so this is why we should use pencil because pencil is insoluble in water and therefore won't travel up the paper so we should be using pencil for our start line, not pen, because otherwise the pen ink will dissolve in the water, travel up the paper and interfere with our results. So what we're going to look at today is retention factor. So this is something which we can use to compare numerically the different um, substances and therefore we can look them up in a database and identify those substances. So our retention factor values, they are unique to each substance and they are the ratio between the distance our substance has traveled, so from our start line to where the substance ended up. So for some substances there might be multiple components and therefore we've got multiple RF values for that substance. And then the distance the solvent has travelled, again going from our start line, but now up to our solvent line, or our solvent front. So this is showing us how far the water, or what the other sol, this is showing us how far our solvent has travelled compared to the substances. And it's important that we're comparing it to the solvent front because we could stop the experiment at any point and therefore we can't just use a distance we've got to compare the ratio between how far the substance has traveled and how far the solvent has traveled and we can use rf values to give us an indication about the solubility of these substances so the larger the rf value the more soluble the substance so if you can pause the video and make a note of that definition and also you have some labels to annotate on your diagram on your worksheet. 
So the way in which we are calculating it, because it is a ratio, we are looking at our distance our substance has travelled divided by the distance our solvent has travelled. So if you can pause the video and make a note of that equation. So there are now two questions for you to have a go at. So explaining why it is important to use the same temperature and solvent as the database in order to confirm purity. So think about how temperature and solvent choice might affect the solubility of our substances. And then what other methods can chemists use to determine the purity of a substance? So thinking back to a couple of lessons ago, how we might have decided whether our water was pure or not. So pause the video whilst you have a go at these. Okay, so there are now a couple of example questions for how to calculate our RF values. So we're looking at how far substance B has travelled from the start line to where we can see the spot and we're comparing that to how far our solvent has travelled. So the colour from flower B has moved 7.2 centimetres and our solvent has moved 9 centimetres. So to calculate the RF value we would then do 7.2 divided by 9 and because our units are the same they're going to cancel so we should always make sure that the prefixes to these units are the same so that they cancel out. So number two is looking at how we can use paper chromatography to confirm whether something is permitted additive. So with our allowed additives this is a known substance and so we would have stored our RF values in a database. So explain how we can use that in order to confirm that it is the permitted substance. So pause the video whilst you have a go at those. Okay, so this brings us to the end of the video part of this lesson. However, you do have some exam questions to have a go at, um, so you can find those on the Padlet. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.